here are three true things about my mother, my oma. One, she is Korean. <laughs> Two, she was adopted. Three, she wasn't around much when I was a kid. Adoption saves lives and creates families. It also creates wounds. My mother shares this wound with hundreds of thousands of other Koreans in a legacy of transnational adoption that goes back to war, poverty, U.S. saviorism, misogyny. When my mother was put up for adoption at the age of five, that created a different wound. She remembers being abandoned. She remembers people, maybe her family, an orphanage, a plane ride. This is not an anti-adoption story. This is a forgiveness story. But how do I forgive someone for things they didn't do? How do I forgive when they didn't do them over and over for years? How do I forgive my mother for passing her trauma on to me? I don't know why my American grandparents adopt from Korea or how they choose my mother, except that the Korean orphanage said her double eyelids made her a good candidate for American adoption. I just know by her telling that they never seemed to want her very much. Ten years after joining their family, she runs away from home. Her adoptive father calls her in for truancy, and when the police pick her up and take her to jail, they call my grandfather, and he tells them, keep her. At 17, she meets a kind man, almost twice her age. And four days after her 18th birthday, she marries him. Because when two families abandon you, not just one, having someone choose you must feel like a miracle. <laughs> that man turns out to have his own wounds, and they fight a lot. But she stays. She has me and my sister. She creates the family she never had, right? They move to a little town, buy a little house, get a little dog. The American dream, number one. And she stays until I'm about five. <laughs> Once my sister and I are in school, my mother finds ways to disappear. First college, then graduate school, she becomes a nurse. She volunteers for the night shifts, the weekends, and this sets the rhythms of my adolescence. We wake up, mom gets home. We go to school, mom goes to sleep. Family dinner at 4.30. Mom goes to work, dad puts us to bed, and repeat. She goes on for two more degrees, she takes jobs out of town. She knows that if she pulls too hard on the wrong string, this family that was supposed to make her whole will fall apart for the third time. I now understand this is self-preservation, but if you ask my mother, this disappearing act is her greatest regret. There's no one to show me how to be Korean. So I'm little, and other kids are really confused by my name, Lin Su. And I assure them it's Korean, but actually, it's not. It's Chinese, I think. It might also be backwards, Su Lin. So I go to college desperate for an ethnic identity, and I encounter my first rice cooker. I immediately become obnoxious about jasmine rice and bamboo chopstick, chopsticks and boba tea. Later, when I realize my version of Korean is again mostly Chinese, I become obnoxious about sticky rice and metal chopsticks and boricha. I realize two things. One, I'm not Korean. I'm Korean-American. And maybe sometimes that feels mixed up, and sometimes you get it backwards, and sometimes it's not Korean at all. And that's not my fault. It's certainly not my father's fault, and it's not my mother's fault either. Because the second thing I realize is there are people and there are the systems that shape them, and those are worth me trying to separate out. Because when I think about a country so ravaged by war, it has to give away or sell its citizens, I feel angry. But when I think about my mother coping with her own trauma, passing it on to me, I don't feel angry. I feel sad and grateful because here are three more true things about my mother. One, she is strong. Two, she refuses to shrink herself. And three, she built herself this life with no family to guide her. So when I have to look up the recipe for kimchi again and again for the hundredth time, I feel a little embarrassed and sad. 
but for just a moment. As I'm throwing that coarse salt over the cabbage, or I'm spreading the paste between the leaves, I look down at my hands, and I see my grandmother's hands. I close my eyes, and I feel what she's felt and smell what she smelled a hundred, a thousand times, and her mother before her. I can reach across time and space and trauma to a family I will never meet, to a country that will never be my home. This is how I heal my lineage. This is how I can forgive. And I know my Oma will never forgive herself. So I'm trying to forgive enough for the both of us.